This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and yep, 26 years later, we're still coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, it's Exxon at ExxonRadioTV.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. The radio show website is ExxonRadioTV.com, and if you'd like to get the information about all the great programming that we have available for you, 724-365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, very simple www.xzbn.net. My guest this hour is Gary Wimmer. And uh, for 40 years, Gary has been a professional musician and psychic. He has been referred to as a medium, intuitive, healer, teacher, spiritualist, and clairvoyant. However, he feels that spirituality and psychic phenomena are multifaceted and overlapping not confined or restricted by human definitions, and he serves in all of these capacities to varying degrees. He is also a frequent radio TV guest and gives live readings to callers. Gary offers readings uh, using pure intuition, regular playing cards to address specific issues of interest or concern, and lithomancy, a fascinating but little-known methodology often referred to as reading stones. He asks no questions prior to giving a lithomancy, lithomancy reading, offers profound insights and clear answers, covers a lot of ground quickly and efficiently, takes any questions, records the readings, and emails a link to the download uh, of the recording. Gary is witty, insightful, entertaining, and very accurate as a psychic. He offers readings over the phone and in person and works regularly at parties, conventions, psychic fairs, festivals, or on cruise ships as well as radio and TV. Numerous professional references are available for anyone to see because he's not afraid to show you his references at www.lithomancy.com. That's L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y.com. And Gary, welcome back to the x Always great having you with us. Uh, Rob, it's mutual. Thank you for having me, my hey, man. You know what? I love your energy, Gary. Man, you just you just come across as a guy who who's self-confident, but loves people. I do love people. I am self-confident. I didn't, uh, I had to learn that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I certainly had challenges in my twenties and thirties yeah. and forties and finally started getting it figured out about the time I hit my fifties, but it's a figure outable situation. That's, I guess the shortest way to say it. Gary, as a musician, and on this has nothing to do with psychic readings or any of the topics we're going to be talking about tonight, but I need to know, uh, what is your impression of the music today? Well, I grew up on melody. I yeah. grew up on the 60s, the Beatles, the Moody Blues, you know, Led Zeppelin. Uh, I didn't get into rap. I didn't get that much into disco. Uh, I like singer-songwriters mm-hmm. if they're good, but I don't really listen to pop music much. I listen to jazz or classical or I play. Yeah. What do you play, Gary? 
I sit around and play the piano. I play guitar. I uh, don't uh, tour or travel or perform that much anymore. I right. pretty pretty well just do readings and um, and speak at conventions nowadays. Um, I'm 69. I I managed to fool them for 45 years. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> hey Gary, how did you make the transition from being a musician into into helping people using the realm of 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 the other side and your gifts as a psychic? Well, I started getting interested in psychic ability way back in college in the late 60s. Um, I had a lady do a horoscope for me, told me I had mm-hmm. a, a lot of natural ability there. I was studying electrical engineering. I started playing um, music guitar in high school in the early 60s. So when I got out of college in 1970, it was all defense work. And I was a war protester. I did not <laughs> want to go into the defense industry. I yeah. started playing music. But at the same time, I started studying a lot about psychic ability, reading Edgar Casey and um, a, a lady I met here in Austin was an astrologer. She said the same thing. you got a lot of natural ability. You should give readings. Right. So I started giving readings in 1972 and three with uh, basic cards and a little bit of palmistry, a little bit of troll, a little bit of my own methods. Uh, and the whole time I played music. So I've pretty well been a musician and a psychic my whole life. Uh, in 1977, I had a near-death experience that um, really changed my life. All right, life. we're going to have to have a bit of a cliffhanger here, my friend, because we've got to take our first break. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Gary. Always great talking to you. And Dexo Nation, if you'd like to find out more about our guest this hour, his name is Gary L. Wimmer, and um, his website is lithomancy.com, L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y.com, and Gary and I will return on the other side of this break. As we continue here in the Exxon on the Exxon Broadcast Network, iHeartRadio, Mutual Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
Wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere. Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Gary L. Wimmer is our special guest, Exonation, Lithomancy.com. And uh, before we went to the break, you were just going to tell us about the near death experience that you had. Uh, most phenomenal thing I've ever been through. Wish I could give people a uh, ticket there and back. It kind of uh, crawled out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It started happening to be in 1977. I started going through a week of escalating psychic ability uh, for a solid week. And then um, I couldn't even imagine what it was like to be normal by the third or fourth day. After eight days, I was involved in a car crash as a pedestrian. Oh my God. It should have killed me. Didn't even get hurt. But between the time I hit the car and landed back in my body, I left for um, a few seconds of earth time, and it felt like infinity of of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, The book is entitled A Second in Eternity for that reason. Um, That happened in 77, 40 years ago. It showed me a lot. I'm still implementing it. One thing I might mention, Rob, a lot of what we're going through now with all the political turmoil and so forth, Mm -hmm. I saw that very clearly in 77 like a bunch of flashcards really? falling before my eyes. Listen, what um, was it like on the other side? It's the the most uh, hard thing to imagine is timelessness. That's really hard to imagine because when we're in a world of time and space, everything has a location and a time, and outside it doesn't. Uh, timelessness, I'm not. I'm sure there's infinite levels of consciousness one can go through. Uh, I felt like I went from the... Uh, basement to the uh top balcony in a few seconds and back uh everybody's life after death what they experience can be a little different because it's a part of our imagination um part of our unique soul our unique psychic perspective but in the all all we are and our everything that is 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 god seeing itself infinite mind seeing itself in infinite ways we just seem to see ourselves in separate existences through time and, and so forth Well, while we're in time and space feeling separate. So the imagine the feeling of separateness is something that's uh, quite different once you get outside the body. And most people who've had pretty intense near-death experiences, like myself, uh, we have one thing in common. We feel infinite love. And that's something that's so profound it never – it, it you once you've experienced that you cannot say you haven't <laughs> you wow. know? it's like nope been there done that i know that one long ways to go on this planet but it's it's a real thing it, it's the most real thing it's the real thing that makes infinite mind and makes infinite creativity all that being said we live as individuals on this life with you know certain genes and characteristics and so forth but underneath all that there's a spiritual awakening going on 
with just this whole life and our genes and our circumstances at a, as a stage, so to speak. Um, did that uh, register there, Rob? I know it did. You're a very brilliant person. Of course it did. <laughs> it, no, and thank you for the compliment, but it did register. And, uh, you know, I'll send you the check tomorrow morning in the mail. Uh, All right. Listen, here, here's a serious <laughs> question. Do, di- do people develop their psychic abilities at different times throughout their lives? Sure, they do. Uh, I started playing piano at 33, uh, so I had didn't practice when I was 6 or 10 or 12. Um, certain people have uh, better limbs. They're going to make better swimmers. Everybody can swim, but not many people are going to beat Mark Phelps. Everybody's different. They, t- they turn on at a different time. They have a different development rate. Uh, they have different innate potential. They have different interests. But despite our differences, everybody can grow a little bit. If you've got two hands, you can learn to play a little bit of piano. You may not have the interest or, or the desire to practice as someone who becomes a, a concert pianist. Uh, but there's relative degrees. And, yes, everybody can start and they can expand. What our limitations are, or I'm not even going to go there because um, I'm not sure how limited we really are. The reason I asked you that, Gary, was because I've been doing this show for 26 years. And lately, I'd say within the last six months, a guest will get on the on the show, and I will be able to. I don't know if this is because I've been doing the show so long, and it's become an an ability of mine to to gauge or to quantify the credibility of the guest. Of course, it's a, it's a grown experience. It's practice. Of course, yeah. you're and not I, you're not uh, you're acknowledging what you've learned and grown. Of course, and and my hats off to you because. As long as you've been doing this, uh, of course, you've got a certain interest and in, in fascination with it and probably a lot of ability there, too. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's what I was getting at because I find it's, you know, uh, like I'll get a guest on and, you know, as soon as I hear their voice, it's like little pictures of of what this guest is really like. And then when they start telling me a story that is different from the pictures that I got – or the impressions that I received when I first started talking to them, I'm able to challenge them on this. Mm-hmm. And I would say that with a great degree of accuracy. And I was just wondering, well, is it because I've been doing this show so long? Is it because I, I was a criminal investigator? Or am I actually developing psychic abilities? Well, I think it's all three combined. Interesting. Yeah, I really do, because our we are cumulative uh, of our experiences, good, bad, and ugly. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like music, Rob. If you can learn to play piano in the key of G, you can yeah. learn to play in B flat or A or D or F. Yeah, isn't that <laughs> the truth? My favorite three chords are C, F, and G. There you go. That's about ninety <laughs> percent of music. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, tell me about lithomancy, the reading patterns in stones. How did you fall into that? Well, I st- again, I started reading, doing readings in the early seventies in nineteen eighty. I met a lady who did this, who did lithomancy readings. I've never seen it. I was fascinated by it. About a week later, she had a course. I attended the course. It was pouring rain. I was the only person there. Um, So she kind of showed me her method. And the next day, I started practicing it. And uh, this was in 1980. Um, In 2001, I lived in Europe all during the 90s. I came back to... uh, Austin here, Texas, in 2001. I couldn't find anything written, uh, a book on lithomancy, so I started writing the book I wrote, Lithomancy, The Psychic Art of Reading Stones. What it basically boils down to, it's reading mm-hmm. symbolism. Ah. There's ten stones, uh, planets, planet stones, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, and six life stones, life, love, luck, commitment, timing, and place. When I do it in person, someone drops the stones. When I do it over the phone, someone says drop. Yeah. And then I read the pattern like a clock over 12 weeks. Um, and I record the reading. And, of course, nobody can tell you everything, but uh, it's very visual. Sure. And I tend to see what someone's going through and why and what it's leading toward. And I probably see that more than anything because that's usually what I'm asking in life. What's going on? You, know? <laughs> you mentioned the political, uh, how should we call it? Do we call it an arena or a disaster? 
earlier when you when you had your near death experience you were you said that you saw the political situation that we're looking at the correct today. and Aha. geographical and with wow. terrorism and with systems falling and with anger and tempers rising um and it wasn't necessarily a date but i could see it was after the turn of the century and this was in 77 when i had this uh you know and it's kind of we have to see the holes mm-hmm. in the boat before we can fix them yeah, isn't that the truth? <laughs> as an individual or as a society, so we're getting to see all the holes in the boat. <laughs> are we? A- but are we able to fix it? Yes, we are. We just we have to learn to put aside our selfishness, yeah, and see ourselves as one humanity, and that's a big challenge considering the um, lack of uh, resources and how they're well, the lack of distribution of resources. Mm-hmm. There's plenty on this planet for everybody. But, you know, I sound like a socialist. I'm really more of a spiritualist because that's really where it comes from. It comes from the heart. Absolutely. Caring yeah. for your brother as much as for yourself. Exactly. You know, exactly. If not more. In, in, you know, in, in the good book, no matter which religious philosophy that you, you follow, or even if you don't follow one, we all know that, you know, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Like it's, Absolutely. It's a, that's the, in my book, that's the law of karma. Well, I... When I wrote my book, Lithomancy, The Psychic Art of Reading Stones, there's a mm. chapter in there about religions, and I did a lot of research, and you're right. Yeah. At their core, all religions talk about a higher self, asking, receiving, uh, caring, taking care of your brother. Yeah. Uh, they don't talk about making more money than the Joneses so you can get a tax write-off. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? But you know what? Something else that, that I've learned over the years, that musicians have known the secret from the word go and that is love we I all think, you need is love i think yeah we we people who are drawn to music a lot whether you play or just listen it is an emotional thing mm-hmm. um you know i have a uh, a couple brothers who are not interested in music in the least which is incomprehensible to me uh but it is it's an emotional thing and a lot of people who are drawn to the arts yeah tend to be emotional or, or creative, and they tend to see things uh, in more ways than, you know, just the way they appear. Is that because people who are drawn towards the arts, you know, they don't have the shield up around their hearts like people in corporate America and corporate Canada do? They they know that in order to to live and let live, you have to let that that force field down and you've got to be able to let the other person feel your heart and that's the only way that they'll let you feel theirs and once again there's that love factor well you you brought up a thought on one extreme end Mm -hmm. say there's love and caring and bringing the truth forward on another extreme there's the hide the truth so you can get away with anything you can (laughs) <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know it's just like in this industry, Gary, and I'm sure you know this because you've been on radio and television many times. A lot of people on air use bogus names. Like, I'm sorry, my name is Rob McConnell. That is my name on my birth certificate. I'm not this person. I'm not that person. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, a lot of announcers that I know in the industry do not use their real names. And well, I think that's kind of. Um... I guess foolish. Be proud of who you are, what you exactly. say. Exactly. And when I challenge them on this, they, their excuse is, well, people write books under different names. What's the difference? Oh, I, well, there's a big difference because when you're on air and you're talking to somebody or you're talking to your audience, honesty and integrity is everything. And if you're going to start off by using a name that is not yours, man, you're off to a bad start. I agree with you. I never thought of that. Yeah, I agree with you. You're yeah. right. Tell us about our inner uh, our inner complexity. Well, well, I think I think we see so little of our complexity. Mm-hmm. We tend to, uh, you know, all be drawn to certain needs to survive, pay the rent, feel love, you know, get yeah. around, whatever. Um, underneath, there's so much more going on, and if we kind of looked at it that way like maybe it's not actually what i'm shooting for is the goal the goal is to learn how to get there and appreciate every step along Mm -hmm. the way 
uh, we're starting to understand our inner, inner complexity because um, we're here to evolve and to grow and to learn. And it's not by accident, it's by choice. Uh, so we can get on board with the program or we can stay frustrated. Speaking and about the more frustrated. We learn about ourselves. Speaking about frustrated, Gary, I've got to take a commercial break, which frustrates me sometimes. I'll like be right, right here, now. brother. <laughs> All right, partner, stand by. Exxon Nation, Gary L. Wimmer is our special guest, www.lithomancy.com. And all of Gary's books are available on Amazon.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Don't go away. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen.
Welcome back, everyone. Gary L. Wimmer is our special guest this hour. His website is lithomancy.com. And all the books that Gary has written that he would love to share with you are available on Amazon.com. All right, Gary, before we went away, we were talking about um, our inner complexity. And um, do we all share the same complexity on the inside, or are there those that are gifted who don't have to go through the same trials and tribulations that those with other complexities must go through? Well, I, th- I don't think any two people or voyages or trips are alike. There is a lot of commonality. Mm-hmm. We all want to, uh, you know, be loved and have food and so forth. Uh, but our makeup, our karma, our genes, our history, no, no two points of time and space are the same. Uh, however, we do have a lot of commonality just as humans on this planet. And that goes far beyond just being white or black or or, uh, you know, Asian or Greek or speaking this language. Um, so, yeah, our, our human complexity uh, is also our similarity. What we see is an individual self that's limited by all these things, culture, genes, and so forth. But the more we realize um, the humanness and the commonness, the more we actually do what the religions are all talking about is be at peace and love each other. And that's why we're here to learn that. How do I'm we not look- sure that answered the question, but that was rant number 38. <laughs> no, it answered the question, and thank you for rant number 38. How does one begin to or learn to read the signs, Gary? First of all, I think you, the first step would be to believe that it's possible. Uh, if, you can't, uh, if you can believe it's possible that you can sit down and learn piano, uh, you'll probably, the next step would be to go down and sit down and learn to do it. Um, the universe... What goes on in the internal world and the external world, there's always a connection because we are the interpreter of it. Um, And if we allow ourselves to see that everything we experience in life or see or feel internal or external is meant to enlighten us, then we can start seeing signs in confirmation of that. Mm. If we see that everything's screwing with us, we'll see confirmation of that. But why would you want to choose that option? (laughs) No. True. So the option, if you choose to see that the world is enlightening you, you're setting yourself up to learn how and why and what and techniques. If you choose to see that the world is screwing with you all the time, you're basically putting blinders on. You have free will. You can choose to do that. But the question is always why. And will you? And right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We can all grow regardless of what our circumstances and conditions are. We really can. And the more we grow spiritually and psychically, the more the issues we deal with in real life, whether they're health or money or whatever, uh, become insignificant because we we learn to see and live in light and happiness and creativity. And it's a challenge. It's a learning curve, oh, gosh, as we it? all know. Yeah. You know, I've always looked at what some people call as failures as a lesson to success. Isn't it just like looking at the glass and saying, well, the glass is half empty or the glass is half full? It's it's pretty much that way. Yeah, it is. Because you can see people in very depraved situations, whether it's from abuse or poverty or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can see some people rise above it and some people uh, let their anger and frustration rule them. Tell me, do, do we all have natural psychic abilities, Gary? I think we do. Uh, I absolutely think we do. They just don't teach you that at school or church, unfortunately, because uh, religion would tend to, well, religions in general aren't too hip on it. Uh, our school system certainly doesn't teach it. So we, uh, But it is going around mm-hmm. in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, a lot of information about uh, psychics and near-death experience and ex- higher mind is all coming to play. Thank God. Yes. Because that's exactly what we need in order to make peace on this planet and and, and survive, you know. Because we are going to face Earth challenges, big ones, climate challenges, big ones, Earth the, Earth changing on its axis. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I think it's over the next hundred years. I don't think it's like in three or four. I think there's a series of changes over the next hundred years, politically and socially and geographically that have to happen. So, if we tune into the spiritual side of it. We lose fear over it. It's just discovering where the holes in the boat are. So we can fix them. 
Is, is there a place in a world of psychic phenomena, a place for God as well? Is there a place for God? Yes. Oh, I think everything is God. People ask me if I believe in God. I don't believe in anything but God. Every molecule, every thought, every vibration. Uh, it's just that we get to experience it through our own mind and creativity and free will. But, uh, yeah, to me, God is infinite. And if it's infinite, yeah. there's just nothing it, it is not. <laughs> I, I, agree, one, I agree with you on that, Gary. I really do. Is, yeah, is I the, think— is there a way for people to develop their psychic abilities, to attune them, to enrich them, to help them grow? Yeah, the more you use your psychic ability, your intuition, your spirituality, just like the more you use love and consideration and forgiveness and creativity, those are all higher mind things. They're not physical. There's no limit to them. There's a limit to how fast you can drive you know, or how much spaghetti we can eat. There's no limit to how much we can grow spiritually and psychically. And when we bring those tools in, which are unlimited, to a very seemingly limited world, we have more tools. We can make better progress. We enjoy life more. We have more techniques. We're more empowered. Uh, free will, we have to choose to grow and evolve. Like it says in most religions, Rob, ask and you shall receive. It doesn't say don't ask. We'll give it to you because we know you need it. <laughs> It says, no, be proactive, ask, want to grow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And what? there's a reason for that. What's the reason? Because if enlightenment or growth or being a good person are good goals in life that we're to attain, and I think we can agree they are, if it was forced upon you to learn that and grow, it wouldn't be by choice. It'd be growth by duress or by slavery, <laughs> you know? It wouldn't be by your free will. You wouldn't own it. It would be imposed upon you. Mm, true. And the, the universe wants us to grow, but to choose to grow. It doesn't want to impose upon us. If it wanted to impose upon us, we'd all be enlightened. There'd be no war. There'd be no hunger. be no poverty. We're supposed to learn it and, and yet, choose to learn it. And yet so many years later, we're still not learned. We still haven't learned the lesson. It's an ongoing lesson. Even when we get out to space... It's an ongoing. The human condition is yin yang. It's you know it's um, limited birth death, um, but we can deal with it a lot more effectively than we are. And I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist. There's there's a lot of crap going on in the world, but there's less wars and hatred and killing than there was a thousand years ago. It's a little more mm -hmm. bombastic now, a little more high tech, a little colder. Uh, and a lot more but deadly when it happens. I'm still an optimist. We learn as humans. Um, is there a connection between our past lives, our present life, and how we are going to live in the future? Yes, there are relationships. Um, I asked a great psychic friend of mine, actually the lady who taught me lithium, she, she was great at past lives, and this was a couple of years after I had my near-death experience, so I kind of knew the answer. They wanted her to – and I said, if you took me back to the past life before this one and the one before that one and the one before that one, you got to the <laughs> first past life I had, what would you find? And she said, well, time doesn't work that way. It's circular. It's not linear like that. And she's right. Uh, yes, where our souls came from. Mm -hmm. But how many times we've been here, there's so much history we don't know. We are we are as unique as we are because we've taken choices and decisions and sort of a certain luck of the dice, at least as we see it. I think it's all by choice. I don't believe in accidents or coincidences. I think it's all by choice. Uh, but, yeah, if you added all your lives up and all mine up and every molecule and every thought and every universe, all you'd have was – the mind of God, infinite mind of God, seeing itself. Gary, how do, you, how do you respond to those people who are coming out of the woodwork, whether they're in the New Age genre or they're self-professed quantum physicists and quantum experts, that this existence is nothing else but a hologram? This isn't reality. This is a holographic existence that we're in. What's your take on that statement? 
I suppose you could define it a lot of different ways. Um, there's a physicist I recently got turned on to named Dr. Ruth E. Kastner, K-A-S-T-N-E-R, wrote a book called a, uh, a Transactional Interpretation of Quantum Mechanics. And in it, she describes things like Maya and free will, and she's a physicist. So, yeah, you can have a physicist on one hand that said it's all a hologram and so forth, and you can have another physicist on the other hand, and some physicists are moving in this direction. Wow. I guess it's a matter of interpretation. at the quantum level, yeah. it, it really is thought. I think, Infin therefore, I am. Uh, pardon me? I think, therefore, I am. Yeah, infinite possibilities. They just yeah. happen, we happen to see one particular manifestation of them at this moment. Uh how how do we know there's not a thousand different dimensions going on simultaneously? Right. We're just here. The multiverse uh, theory. Absolutely. Yeah. No beginning, no end. Maybe that's what it meant in the good book when the Lord said, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the end. And thereby, if we just take that a little further in the book of X, uh, in the book of Genesis, when it said, and God created us in his likeness, his image, and if that is... The fact, then, we are gods, and if we are gods and the Son of God, Jesus said that he is the Alpha and he is the Omega, therefore, if God created us, then we are also the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. Yeah. And that's exactly what Jesus was telling people. The kingdom of heaven is within. Yep. It's here before your eyes, you know. There's certain things you have to do to see it, and that's be be good and kind and nice and sweet, rather than a jerk. <laughs> you know? All you really have to do to understand life, in my opinion, is just just think of this for a second. I used to have T-shirts that I used to give away that said this: "Life is simple, humans complicated." Uh, good point. Right. You know, it's see the lilies in the field; they toil not. <laughs> Oh, you and I are from the same age, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we are. You're right. I got to get bring my guitar down to your place. We got a jam on your front step. Absolutely, man. I've done it many, many <laughs> times in my life. Uh, Gary, uh, your books are available on Amazon.com. How many books do you have there? Uh, I've got s several that I'm still working on. Wow. I've got two self-published right now. A Second in Eternity, about my near-death experience. Yep. And that's quite an interesting book. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, Lithomancy, The Psychic Art of Reading Stones, which is like uh, more like a textbook. Shows you how to um, interpret uh, 16 stones dropped into a circle of leather. Hey, Gary, I'd like you to do something for me when we come back from this break. It's our final sure. break. I'd like you to use your stones to give me a reading. On air, unrehearsed. I'll take you up on that, man. All right, my brother. Stand by. Exo Nation. Gary L. Wimmer is our special guest. Yeah, we're from the same school. Probably relate, Probably related somewhere down the line. What the heck we all are. When you look at the big picture, we're all related on this big planet of ours. And yet we do everything we can to destroy certain people. I'll be back on the other side of this break with Gary Wimmer. His website is lithomancy.com. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Are you curious? Do you want to learn more about how the world works and have fun at the same time? Study coincidences with me, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on my Connecting with Coincidence radio show here on the XZBN network. Listen to Jungians theorize, statisticians randomize, true believers evangelize, while I categorize. I dance to the rhythm of coincidences. People who experience me see more of them. Maybe something on the show matches a thought in your mind. Let us know. Expand your mind to the weirdness happening around you. Synchronicity spoken here, there, and everywhere. For more information, put Connecting with Coincidence in your search engine and find my website, my social media sites, and my blog. This 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. All right, Exxon Nation. This is the Exxon Radio Show, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My guest this hour is Gary L. Wimmer. His website is lithomancy.com. Now, before we went to the commercial break, I asked Gary if he would uh, take his stones out and do an on-air reading for me, unrehearsed. And Gary, as you see it, no matter what you see, tell it as it is, brother. I definitely will, my man. Okay, so what do we do? I've charged these stones up in my hand. I'm using the 16 stones. All you have to do, Rob, one time, real clearly, just say drop. When okay. I hear that, I'll drop the stones, and I'll kind of read them like a clock over the next 12 weeks, okay? Sure. So it's up to you, Rob. All right. you say drop? Drop. All right. Uh, a lot of changes going on in your life right now. Um with activity, with plans, with uh, probably relationships, commitments, things like that. Uh, But it feels like over the next week to two weeks, because of a lot of these changes, it feels like you're um, like setting new things in play, 
both with uh, your environment, your place, your plans, getting back in power. Mm -hmm. uh, are you are you married? I certainly am. So is my wife. <laughs> Oh, so you're right. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's the, the love stone is up to the top here, and it's kind of pointing toward um, – well, the way it's pointing, it's saying that uh, some of the issues that everybody goes through are getting re redefined, reworked yep. in a fresh way. Mm -hmm. uh, they all – we all need to have that happen periodically, changing our oil. So the commitment stone, the love stone at the first here in the first week have a lot to do with commitments, business plans and involving family, how it affects them, mm -hmm. how you get affected. Uh, and it feels like there's more of a management of time that's coming about and that's necessary for you to not feel like everything's happening at once. You know? <laughs> Just making sense to you? It sure is. So by the second and third week here, I feel like because of a lot of um, like fresh planning and organization, you're mm -hmm. kind of not letting the wild horses run over you. You're taming them and it's setting new, uh, like policies and goals and standards in play. And it feels like if there wouldn't have been this kind of shakeup with a lot of things, communication plans, relationship, uh, you probably wouldn't be getting this new, uh, like level of how you're going to, um, set things in the future. It's like it's helping you update in a lot of ways. Right. Get rid, get rid of the slack, the things that are pulling you down, mm -hmm. hold, holding you back, that sort of thing. Uh, by the third and fourth and fifth week here, boy, it feels like both finances, opportunities, and new plans for your life are coming into play. Uh, and they're pretty proportional to how much in this first week or two you um, allow yourself to see this as a very creative process that's updating you rather than um, a bunch of wild horses running over you. You with me? I sure am on that, and you're dead on. And uh, by the sixth and seventh week, it feels like, boy, you've emotionally set so many things in play, not only with your relationship, but with your um, like updated uh, uh, system, mm -hmm. uh, both personally, with your place, with business, and with your um, decision-making. Uh, such so about the sixth and seventh and eighth week here, you have this sense of magic back in your life and this sense of, um, balance and harmony and creativity that's, um, fresh, new. And, and that's kind of what you're heading at now. You're seeing a lot of what needs to be, uh, updated so you can update it. Uh, from the eighth and ninth and 10th week here, it feels like, uh, not only have you got a really good system of balance going back with you again, not only in relationships, but also in these new plans that you're going through in the next couple weeks, organizational plans and so forth. But by the end of this three month period, a lot of the um, some of the doubts that you've had about where am I going to go in the future seem like they're being replaced with, oh, here's where I'm going to go. So beyond this three month period, you've got Neptune. Uh, and it uh, has to do with fresh dreams and plans and hopes. So in a way, life is kind of updating you um, prior to you to to uh, so you can take the big leaps uh, of faith with uh, new plans in your life that seem to be um, like a lot of winning scenarios in your regard, uh, even more so. You got a lot of good energy that's coming back to you, Rob, and and. Um, and you are growing a lot psychically and spiritually. Uh, do you write? I certainly do. Okay. Well, there's a lot of new things that seem like they're coming into your mind for writing or communication or, uh, you know. I'll share, it feels, I'll, it feels I'll, like you're carving out more time to do that. I'll share one with you because you, you hit it dead on. You know when you go into a coffee shop and you've got these newspapers all over the place? Gotcha. Okay. Well, we've come out with a one-sheet, dual-sided uh, publication called The Cup and Saucer. And it's going to be in coffee shops across Ontario, and we're, going to, we're franchising across Canada and into the United States. And it's based on paranormal. So when you're having your coffee, you'll have your horoscope, you'll have this, you'll have that, you'll have uh, what I call uh, factoids. And, gotcha. and this is our way of bringing and uh, introducing what we do, as well as our guests and, and, and the other shows that we do, to the public. And it's called Cups and Saucer. Get it? Flying Saucer? 
saucer. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, it yeah. certainly feels like it's um, part of this new creativity that you're feeling. Uh, like I said, the first thing I felt was all this change, very, very rapid and quick and expansive mm -hmm. change. Uh, I think you've got a hit there, and I think it's probably going to even want to grow beyond the local area. Wow. I wouldn't be surprised. So you might be hitting a bigger publication than you think. <laughs> you know? Well, we already do. We already have a monthly publication that we've been publishing since 1991 called the X Chronicles newspaper. That's right. That's and, right. And we, uh, you know, it's right now. I When I first did my first edition was cut and paste, and it was on, on um, I, I layout sheets. And it was 22 pages. No, 12 pages, I'm sorry. 12 pages, 11 by 17. And on the front page, we had a picture of the elongated skulls from Peru. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't give that thing away. In fact, we ended up, uh, my first run, I bought 20,000 copies, and I ended up giving them away. But then we started, uh, we got in with a, a company that had faith in us, and they saw it, and they said, wow, we want to run with it. And I figured, okay. So I went out, and I, but they needed 40,000 copies. So I went out and invested in the 40,000 copies, and I brought the paper up to 44 pages. Well, within three months, that newspaper that is still in publication today was right across Canada. In every airport, every train station, every bus terminal, every newspaper stand. And my biggest thrill, my friend, was when we went shopping. And it was the Zares in St. Catharines, because I lived in St. Catharines at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was my newspaper. <laughs> in the newspaper Congratulations, stand. Congratulations, man. And this is going back to 1991, Gary. And I bought my own newspaper. My, my wife says, Robbie, why? You've got some in the basement. I said, I know, but this one I <laughs> bought. Well, and, it, it could have been that expansion I was feeling, but it feels like you're set up for more of it as well. Oh, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of irons in the fire, my friend. A lot oh, of you irons do? In the fire. And I feel like it's, uh, I, I don't think you give yourself credit for how much healing you do. Mm. Uh, and you really do. Uh, that's what I'm feeling here toward the end of this three months period is you become aware of it more so whether it's uh, so you can even include it not only in your writing, but in your personal plans, too, because really? you already include it in your business and your relationship. Well, I, I always have, Gary, because the, the entire the entire purpose for this radio show is is to make a positive difference in one person each. and Absolutely. Every night. The domino effect. One person at a time. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to do this show. I have great people like you on the show to spread the word. And, uh, you know, 3,987 guests. Jesus, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've got the best job in the world. I talk to the most interesting people in the world. And I get to help people. What more can a person ask for in life? Absolutely, man. Living your dream. Making a better world. And talking to good people like you. Listen, um, we've got about 40 seconds left. Anything else too important to tell me? No, everybody be at peace. Take a deep breath. Relax. There's some. There's a lot of crap going yep. on, but we don't have to be in the sewer with it. Raise your consciousness. Meditate. Be at peace. Think of how much creativity you can bring to your life and your situation. We can't change the world till we change ourselves. Isn't that the truth? Starts at home. That's right, and if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Ain't, and you can't be neutral. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Gary, let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and where they can get your books, my friend. Well, they can go to Amazon.com, Google Gary L. Wimmer. Uh, you can Google Gary Wimmer.com, and you'll find me, G-A-R-Y-W-I-M-M-E-R.com. You can go to my website, Lithomancy, L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y.com, Uh you can call me, uh, leave a message with your number because I get spam calls all day, 512-707-0836. You must leave a message and a number. Uh, you can email me, gw 
at g a r y w i m m e r dot com. And if that isn't enough to fill your plate, Rob, I don't know what is. <laughs> hey, Gary, thank you so much for sharing your time with us tonight here on the Excellent. I truly appreciate you, my friend, and I look forward to the next time you join us back here. Don't be a stranger. Oh, always a pleasure to be with you, Rob. You have a good night. God bless and stay inspired, my man. I will. God bless you too, my friend. Exo Nation, Gary L. Wimmer has been our guest. www.lithomancy.com. I'll be back on the other side of this news break here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs> 